Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is Cobra Kai Season 3. Remember, Season 2 ended on the first day of school with the all-out karate war. It was an epic brawl between Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do, which was a real fun time until people get hurt. Especially when Robbie kicked Miguel so hard he fell over the balcony and oh no, he's fallen! Ow! Oh! Miguel is grievously injured and his sensei, Johnny Lawrence, feels guilty. He renounces Cobra Kai and karate in general. Soon Miguel wakes up and he's kind of okay, but he's paralyzed from the waist down. He may never walk again. Daniel LaRusso feels guilty too and also stops teaching karate. He tracks down his student, Robbie Keane, who of course is Johnny Lawrence's son. He's been on the run, but LaRusso's like, hey kid, the best thing you can do is turn yourself in, which Robbie feels is a betrayal. Johnny visits his son and tries to make amends, but it's like, yo dad, you've never been there for me. I don't need or want you in my life. So Johnny focuses on helping Miguel, who's kind of given up, but Sensei Lawrence is here to motivate him. He's like, hey kid, we're gonna get you on your feet again. And per usual, he uses ridiculous, hilarious training techniques. One of them is going to a classic rock concert to get in the right headspace, and indeed Miguel's foot's a tap in. All right, he's gonna do it. Meanwhile, the kid's karate rivalry is stronger than ever, but the school's implemented a zero tolerance fighting policy, so they have to find creative other ways to kick each other in the face. It ends in a big fight off school property at the laser tag arena, where Hawk grabs his old best friend Dimitri's arm and no mercy breaks it! Ouch! Yes, Darth Kreese has taken over Cobra Kai and brought it fully to the dark side. Under Johnny, Cobra Kai was a fun place where bullied kids learn to be tougher, but Kreese is only looking for natural born Cobras. Anyone without the killer instinct, he kicks right out. In fact, he recruits the bullies and has them fight for a spot in the dojo, kicking out anyone who doesn't make the cut. Now these are the guys who used to bully Eli about his lip scar, but Hawk is never going back, even if it means becoming one of the bullies he once hated. Cobra Kai's other star fighter is Tori, who's had a real rough life and has no problem following Kreese to the dark side. But Kreese has one more star recruit in mind, Robbie Keane. He's been having a rough time in Juvie, and Kreese convinces him to drop the Miyagi-Do self-defense and strike first, strike hard. So when he finally gets out, he's got his real dad and his karate dad, but he rejects them both. He joins with Kreese, his new evil karate grandpa. So Johnny continues physical therapy with Miguel and eventually it works, Miguel's walking again. But now that he's back, he finds his old Cobra Kai friends have gone to the dark side. So Sensei Lawrence realizes he's gotta get his old students back on the right path. He's gonna teach karate again. So he gathers up the new Cobra Kai rejects and unfortunately he can't use the name Cobra Kai anymore. He goes with Eagle Fang Karate, which is not as cool. In fact, we learn the origin to the name Cobra Kai in a John Kreese flashback when he was Special Forces Vietnam and the No Mercy Karate, you know, made sense. But his squad ended up captured, and for fun, they made them fight each other to the death. Over a pit full of snakes! Yes, it was a Cobra Kai! Meanwhile, Daniel LaRusso's having trouble at his car dealership. With the bad press from the school fight, the Japanese manufacturers don't want to work with him anymore. While he's in Japan, he visits Mr. Miyagi's old village, which was the setting of Karate Kid 2, but he finds it different than he remembers. But he runs into some old friends, his love interest from that movie, and the villain, and I'm pretty sure I never saw this one, but it looks like it was wild. They're all grown up now, though, and agree to be friends. In fact, this guy teaches Daniel the secret lost art of the Miyagi-Do offense arm numbing technique. And luckily he meets one more old friend, the little girl he saved from a monsoon, who's now a vice president of the car companies. So there's some business advice for you. Save everyone you can from monsoons. Now when he gets back and learns how bad Cobra Kai's gotten, he starts teaching karate again so his students can defend themselves. So now we have three dojos. Miyagi-Do that teaches defense and inner peace. Eagle Fang Karate, which is about being a badass but not an asshole. And Cobra Kai, for those who enjoy being a villain. Now remember, at the center of this dojo the war is the karate rival love square. Miguel's becoming a better person as Tori's becoming worse, so they officially break up and Miguel rekindles things with his original girlfriend, Samantha LaRusso. One night soon, they're karate flirting just in time for her new boyfriend, Robbie, to see. And it's the exact opposite of their scene in season one where this time Robbie's the asshole. So Tori and Robbie's exes are dating each other again and these two realize they have a lot in common. They don't hook up yet, but it's inevitable. There's another funny romance between Dimitri and season one's hot mean girl, Yasmin. She skipped season two, she was in Paris for the summer, and by the way, Aisha is not back this season, her parents moved away. But the atomic wedgie Aisha gave her has made her a bit of a better person. And Dimitri's newfound karate confidence eventually wears her down, these two get together. The adults find love too, remember Johnny has a crush on Miguel's mom and they went on one date last season, and the way to a woman's heart is to help her paralyzed son miraculously walk again, so these two finally get it on. But there's a complication when Johnny finally figures out Facebook and has a friend request from Allie Mills, his high school girlfriend, the one that got away. She's in town for the holiday so they meet up and have a great time. It's too bad she's married now. But turns out she's recently divorced. Oh, it's on. But remember, she wasn't just Johnny's high school girlfriend. She dated LaRusso too. These old rivals almost break into a karate fight right here, but luckily Daniel's wife is here to bring us all back down to reality. 
Have the man boys filled you in on the whole mortal enemy karate dojo battling for the soul of the valley thing? So they all have a great night together, and Allie helps these two realize if they weren't so committed to being enemies, they could be good friends. And as for the romance, Johnny doesn't pursue it. He just started dating Miguel's mom, so these two are just friends. Now Sam and Miguel work together to squash the beef between their dojos so they can unite against Cobra Kai. It's not gonna work, the beef is too strong, but Cobra Kai crashes the party so they have to work together, and it's time for another season finale, epic karate fight, yeah! Now Miguel's been training really hard, but it's a long road to recovery. In fact, he should absolutely not be part of this fight. And now Hawk realizes he's fighting with his bullies against his best friends. What am I doing? Yes, it's time for Hawk to switch sides. Oh yeah, best nerd friends reunited. So working together, they beat Cobra Kai for now, but when Johnny learns what happens, he busts into see Crease and finds him training his son, Robbie. No, you were the chosen one. You were supposed to bring balance to the force, not leave it in darkness. So Johnny finally has a fight with Crease, but Robbie steps in and it's a father-son fight. Then Daniel LaRusso comes too, ready for some offense. Oh yeah, karate! Then at the end, boom! Uses the new arm-numbing trick he learned, and Crease is defeated. But he's not surrendering yet. You may have won this battle, but let's settle this the old-fashioned way at the All Valley Under-18 Karate Tournament. And so the original Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do beefs are squashed for good. They're combining dojos to take down new evil Cobra Kai. And even the adults, Johnny Lawrence and Danny LaRusso, agree to put their lifelong rivalry on pause. They're gonna be co-senseis, and with their wildly different styles, it's gonna be hilarious. And that's where Cobra Kai Season 3 comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies. And if you loved this recap, check out the join button and support the channel as a member.